so excited to be talking about this film today. I finally saw it after about a year of it being on my radar, and I'm so surprised that I had never heard of it before um, hearing about this film last year, because it has to be one of the true masterpieces in cinema. This film is a remarkable work of cinematography, of direction, acting, uh, you name it. It's probably the greatest war film I've ever seen, and I still feel like the dust and rubble is setting in to me from seeing it. I saw it a couple days ago, but I feel like I'm about ready to talk about it. The film, um, and excuse me if I pronounce any names wrong, is directed by Elim Klimov, and it is 1985's Come and See. <laughs> Come and See is a really brutal war film about the German invasion of the Soviet Union, and the film does come from the Soviet Union and is in Russian with English subtitles if you watch it in America or in English. Um, and I will say that this film runs about two hours and 20 minutes, and it's jam-packed. This easily could have been a four-hour epic, and I'm amazed that they were able to get this um, giant story down in the runtime that it has. And it, um, in doing so, has very little pretension. It has um, remarkable, remarkable scenes of brutality and also of deep beauty. And it finds this amazing balance between the ugliness of war and also the uh, beautiful, innocent moments that a lot of people involved in it um, experience. The film mostly revolves around a young man. I believe his name is Florio, and uh, he, not really important his name. He's kind of the uh, person that we see through his eyes throughout the entire film, and the film is given through his perspective. And so early in the film, he decides he's going to fight in the war, and this is all against his mother's wishes, but he chooses to leave home. And uh, as he's leaving home, his mom is screaming for him and, you know, chasing after him and waving goodbye with his two younger sisters. And he ends up going on a long quest. And the film almost feels like a meditation or a dream. And you're, you're just kind of on the ride with this young man as he goes from moment to moment of horrific, horrific violence and brutality and, you know, getting in with one troop and them dying and him narrowly escaping. And uh, you're not even sure how to process each scene as it happens, just in the much in the way that you feel this character who's stuck in the middle of war is um, doing. The performance from the young man is really incredible. And um, one thing to note about the cinematography is, much like Bergman, it's very, very tight on the faces and very, very close up. Little bitch. Which is very surprising for a war film. A lot of war films are very broad and very wide shot and lots of deep, long battle scenes. And this film really keeps you inside the emotions and inside the uh, perplexity that is going on in this kid uh, and, you know, the experiences that he's having. So I really commend the cinematography. I definitely got um, calls to Tarkovsky, who is my favorite uh, Soviet Union director. And um, Tarkovsky was also a huge fan of Bergman. He used Bergman's cinematographer in the film The Sacrifice. So we know that he loves Bergman and also does that sort of tight on the face thing a lot of the time. But it really works for a war film. Um, and just keeps that drama going throughout the film. Uh, somewhere around, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes into the movie, uh, the young man meets a young girl named Galasha. And Galasha is a, kind of the wild, fun spirit as well. And she has some really beautiful moments and their relationship is really incredible early in the film. They uh, express a lot of innocence and love and uh, also, we get to see a through line for her that ends very brutally and uh, is incredibly disturbing. Oh 
the uh, treatment of humans, the treatment of animals uh, is completely played out in its full extremity. And uh, I personally have some problems with uh, burning and people on fire, and there is a lot of that in this movie. And uh, that was very difficult to watch. And I just think that it, um, while as brutal as it is, it does accurately reflect what was going on in this time and is a powerful statement to the brutality of war. <laughs> The cinematography was probably my favorite element. The score is wonderful. There's elements of Mozart used throughout. Um, notably, the final scene uses uh, Mozart's Lacrimosa, which is um, very haunting and beautiful. And uh, another element that I thought was really interesting about this film was the makeup. And you get to see a lot of that in our main character's face. In the beginning of the film, he starts very innocent and young. And throughout the course of the film, as these brutal things are happening to him, we almost see in an exaggerated way him start to age. And his hair goes gray and his face gets weathered. You can tell there's like liquid latex on his face. It really starts to become like this like horrific old man face on top of this young child. And that is uh, a really powerful image. And I think, you know, it, it although is is exaggerated a bit, it still works in the cinematic atmosphere of this film. As for as wild and brutal as it can be, it can also have its moments to have fun. There's a beautiful scene where um, Glasha and the young man are out in the woods and they're... Uh, you know, just messing around being kids and they're, you know, getting wet and covered in the rain and uh, Glasha starts to dance. <laughs> and it just has this really free-spirited, almost Fellini-esque uh, moment that it takes. And I love that. I love when, when dark films take a moment to just... Uh, express joy or fun. There's also a really interesting moment where the uh, people in the village, in the Russian village, are um, they have a skeleton of a Nazi officer that they're decorating with clay and they're kind of like dolling him up and they eventually doll it up and it's got the Heil Hitler going on and they all just start spitting on it and cursing at it and letting their feelings come out at this um, dolled up skeleton. Again, it's very dark, but also a bit humorous and a bit... Um, cinematic to watch you know it's something that uh allows us to keep ourselves invested in the film beyond watching just violence after violence the war scenes are incredible i read that there is uh, real ammunition being fired in the film the fire the flames the flamethrower so intense and the sound at times. There's a moment where, um, this is right after the dancing in Glasha and the young man in the forest, there's a uh, bombing that goes on that is so visceral and it totally gave me a callback to Dunkirk and the sound and the booming noise that goes on with the bombing. That <laughs> But it is so intense and it puts you right there. And in, after this scene, the young man um, starts to lose his hearing and it goes a bit deaf. And so it plays with that um, as well. Just overall, a film, again, that I'm still trying to allow to sink in. And I'm sure I will give a number more of more viewings to as time goes on. But I really just want to put it on people's radar because it's so incredible and I feel like completely underappreciated. I did read that it is uh, one of the top rated films on Letterboxd. And I've now noticed that it's in the IMDb Top 250. So I believe it's starting to get its due. It's just taken some time, I believe. And... Uh, I recommend anybody who's into cinema and anybody who's into war, anybody who's into um, just seeing brutality in, that in reality put up on screen, check out Come and See.